But crystal balls coming on saying, hey, Matt, how big a calorie deficit should be in order to lose fat but keep muscle at the same muscle mass at the same time? So general rule of thumb is usually about 500 calories a day is a lot of times the thing that you uh, come across these days. A lot of folks seem to find that as a nice point because you know if you really go into the deficit, you create a caloric deficit is like cutting back on spending in your household budget. If you cut back too much, you can start really compromising things as far as your quality of life and your health and stuff. But if you don't come back enough, then that can be a little bit of a snafu. But remember that it always depends very much on what your starting circumstances are. So if you're somebody who's looking to lose weight, but you're already chronically overeating a lot, a lot of times from caloric sources, like, oh, I get three Starbucks runs a day and I drink a six pack of beer every night and I have uh, all kinds of snacky junk foods that I'm eating all day. And so these sorts of things, if you cut back significantly on a lot of those, you can create a deficit that's well over a thousand calories, easy, and you'd be perfectly fine. Because what we're talking about here is something I've always called luxury calories. Luxury calories are kind of like the caloric intake that you're consuming on a regular basis that is contributing to being overweight, that your body is potentially not really doing a whole lot for and contributing to the maintenance and the well-being of your body. So a lot of folks who have a lot of luxury calories can cut back a lot of calories and still be perfectly fine. But those who are already eating at relatively uh, maintenance levels and stuff, cutting back a lot more is going to be a lot more kind of painful about it, so to speak, and run more of a risk of potentially losing some of that muscle mass. So think about it this way. Uh, you can go online and kind of get a general feel for your base metabolic rate, it, metabolism, if a lot of people call it that, and use multiple calculators because you're going to get numbers all over the place. One is going to say you've got a metabolic rate of 2,800 calories. One is going to say you have a metabolic rate of 1,200 calories. It's going to be all over the place. So do this like five or six times. Get a general rough ballpark estimate. Most people are in the uh, upper teens, 1,700, 1,800, 20, uh, 2,000 calories, that sort of thing. And generally, and then you start counting your calories to get a rough ballpark. You're never going to get it exact. You're always going to be off by a, a fair degree. But if you can get a rough estimate of your caloric number, the closer you are to your regular metabolic rate, the harder it's going to be to lose weight because you're not really consuming that many calor uh, luxury calories. If you have a caloric intake of 3000 calories and your base metabolic rate is 1900 calories, you could probably cut back a fair degree and you're going to be fine. 800 calorie cutback, uh, especially if you're calorie hacking uh, for just every few days or so, then you're fine. But if you're like, dude, my base metabolic rate is 1900 calories. And by my estimation, I'm eating like 2200 calories a day. It's going to be harder to cut back on calories because I know a lot of times people are like, oh, it's 90 percent diet. It's all diet. It's, yeah, but if someone's not eating very much and they're already kind of at maintenance, that's kind of like telling someone save more money. And they're like, dude, I'm already living on bologna and hot pockets and uh, we don't have any luxuries whatsoever. What the hell am I going to cut back on? In that case, it may be more productive and behoove you more to increase your caloric expenditure through physical activity. I know a lot of people like, you can't out-train a bad diet, can't out-train. That's nonsense. People have trained bad diets all the time. And if you want to kind of think about it, like caloric burn and caloric cutback are both equally influential. You know, burning an extra 500 calories a day has the same influence on your calorie balance as cutting back 500 calories a day. It's the same kind of thing to your balance. And depending on how much you're eating near that base metabolic rate may be a determining factor on whether or not it's going to be more productive to either cut back or increase. And I always kind of looked at it like increasing your caloric expenditure is like offensive engagement if you're trying to lose weight. That's, that's playing offense. You're going, you're taking the battle to the enemy, so to speak. And then doing things with like diet, that's like defense, if you will. So it depends a lot on your circumstances that you're starting with. I had someone email me um, uh, several weeks ago and they were struggling. It's like, okay, I'm struggling to continue losing weight and stuff. And they had just basically cut back. 
their diet so much. They were basically not eating very much at all. And they're like, I can't keep, you know, losing weight and stuff. I'm like, dude, you're not going to make any more headway cutting back more, dieting more. In fact, I wouldn't recommend it because at that point, you're going to start compromising health and quality of life and all these other sorts of things. Like, you're going to have to take a different take tack here because you can only make so much progress cutting back. And again, it depends a lot on what your circumstances are, on whether or not cutting back to any good degree is actually the right course of action for you to take. So I know it's a long-winded question or comment, answer, ugh, one of those, for the question that you're asking there, Cristobal, but uh, there's a lot of nuance to these sorts of things.